today we're going to do a uh, column chromatography experiment. Um, I'm going to do this mainly as a demo, not really collecting and measuring things, but just to give you an idea of how column chromatography is carried out. Um, in terms of the apparatus, we'll need a, uh, this is a thick wall pipette. Um, it's more durable than your standard disposable pipettes that we usually use to transfer liquid from one container maybe to another. Um, so we have a thick walled pipette and then we'll need probably at least three pipettes to transfer material from one um, container to the pipette. This is going to serve as our column if you will. And then we'll need um, several small flasks. I've labeled these. What we're going to separate today are uh, a dye mixture. And one is going to have a blue color, and I labeled one flask B for blue. The other component is yellow, so I labeled it Y. We're going to collect our um, dyes that are in the mixture in these separate flasks. I have one flask that's called a mixture. You'll understand what I mean by that as the experiment goes on. And then I have one that's labeled for ethanol. That's one of our solvents that we're going to use. And then we're also going to use water as another solvent. Uh, we need a small uh, funnel so we can transfer material without spilling it into the our column, if you will. I need a beaker to make a slurry of our um, stationary phase, which is going to be the aluminum. So the aluminum is going to be our stationary phase. This is our dye mixture. It has both the yellow and the blue uh, combined. And then this is sand that we'll need. And if we run into a little bit of trouble with the flow, of the um, material inside the column, we may have to add a drop of hydrochloric acid to increase the, the flow rate, if you will. Before we get started, I wanted to give you an idea of what a traditional chromatography column looks like. It looks very similar to a burette, although you'll notice there's no graduation marks here. There is a stop cock. And typically when you separate things by column chromatography, and just to kind of compare thin layer chromatography, which is what we did uh, in the previous experiment compared to column chromatography, usually thin layer is a precursor to the column experiment. Um, if you remember from the thin layer chromatography, we chose different solvents. We were trying to figure out what was the best solvent system to use to distinguish between the different components of chlorophyll and spinach leaves. And if we took that, we, and we couldn't actually isolate any of the material, we could see the different components there, but there, we didn't really isolate anything. By using column chromatography, this allows us to actually collect the samples that we're trying to, um, to separate within that mixture. So this is a, and this is pretty small. This is a, one of the smallest ones I've ever seen. Usually they can be, have a diameter of about this big or even a little bit smaller. And it certainly takes quite a bit of time to pack this and also to run it. And that's the reason for experimental purposes, I'm going to a smaller scale. But very similar, the stopcock here allows the liquid to go through. We need some type of packing material or safety material, if you will, that will only allow the liquid to go through and not our adsorbent, which is the stationary phase. In this case, it's gonna be the aluminum. So we usually would either put a piece of glass wool at the bottom, or we can use cotton. We'll put that in. We'll put a layer of sand above that. Then we're gonna fill up our column. This is our miniature column, but it's gonna serve the same purpose. Then we would fill up our column with whatever adsorbent stationary phase and there's different ones you can use traditionally in most chemistry labs you will use alumina which is aluminum oxide or you can use um, silicon uh, silicon dioxide um, or really it's really silicic acid so you could use that they have a very high particle or great surface area fine particle size so and the reason that's important is that that adds um, into the separation of the components you're trying to separate. So we'll put our uh, adsorbent here, and then usually at the top, we're gonna put a thin layer of sand again because we don't want to disrupt what we have uh, in the adsorbent 
the purpose is is to add more liquid through the top and if we add that we could damage the the packing of that absorbent to start with so once we add our absorbent we're going to top it off with a thin layer of sand and right at the top of the sand will is where we'll add a drop or two of our sample to be separated let that drain a little bit and then we'll fill it the rest of it up with whatever solvent we're using for that separation so we're going to do the, the same process here this is just going to be a little bit smaller and quicker to get the experiment done so i've got a piece of cotton uh, we don't want to go too tight but we want to make sure we can collect it and uh, have most of the material to go through Sometimes you can kind of tell if you pack too much cotton in there or too much of the uh, glass wool because if, the, if it's draining extremely slow, and this is going to be slow to start with because we're using various polar solvents, but if it hardly drips at all, then we, one of the errors we may have used was to use too much. If you don't use enough, then you'll have sand and the silica to go through, which again will affect your separation. So once that is done, I'm going to add a little bit of sand and it's probably a good idea to use a, a small funnel to do this. I notice under the, um, within the fume hood, the, the movement of air is so great, things that are especially fine particles will tend to go all over the place. Every time we add something, we want to give it a tap. I'm using the rubber policeman uh, on a stirring rod. You could certainly use a piece of rubber tubing. And we just want to kind of make sure that's a little more level. And I think I'm going to add just a little bit more of that sand. pretty good when you leave that as it is and then what I need to do and there's different ways you can pack the column you could pack it what they call dry and it's a little bit of a misnomer because if you pack it dry what you typically would do is to fill this about oh a third full of the solvent you're using and then you add the adsorbent dry to that and then you would again tap the sides of the, the column to make sure that you have even packing. Um, you can do that or you can make a slurry of the adsorbent, in this case again the aluminum, in the solvent and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to make a slurry of this. What I'm going to do is to take some of this, put in a beaker and then add some of my ethanol to that and then once I do that we'll stir it up. It'll be more like a slurry. We'll pour it in and then tap the sides of the two. I'm gonna start with this much. I'm not quite sure how much will be needed to fill this up. We're not gonna fill it all the way to the top. We'll probably go maybe somewhere between half full to two thirds full. So I wanna add the ethanol. And I just wanna add enough that we can have a slurry. If it's too thin, I'll add a little bit more of these uh, alumina. That's a little bit thin. I'm gonna add some more of the alumina. And it could be I may need to use more aluminum to complete the packing. And again, just a little bit at a time. You don't wanna kinda of go overboard. So we've got a slurry. It's a little thicker than just a regular liquid. But what I wanna do, I'm gonna pour this in, into the funnel, making sure I don't go over. And the other thing I wanna make sure, because as soon as the liquid hits this and it goes down, we can start collecting the liquid. I'm gonna use, since the solvent I'm using now is ethanol, I'm gonna use my flask that's labeled ethanol to catch anything that drips through. 
And before I use or apply my sample, I can reuse that ethanol as my solvent because nothing's gone through except the ethanol at that point. And then as this is settling, I just want to tap the sides. And the purpose of, of tapping the sides, uh, if you don't do this, you want it as packed as well as possible, as tight as possible. If you don't do this initially, it's possible that during the experiment, you may get air bubbles or chambers that develop and then your separation isn't gonna be uh, very successful. Now, I think you can probably see there is a layer of the liquid above. We always wanna keep the layer of the solvent well above the layer of our adsorbent. And I'm gonna add uh, some more because I want this to be a little bit higher up. I do notice that the solvent has a little bit of cloudiness to it. Uh, probably may have should have used a little bit thicker band of sand um, that's the only thing I can think of I'm pretty sure I've got enough cotton that's in there because we don't want to block the flow too much so uh, probably to have aim for a little bit higher level of sand that you see here you can tell how slow it is dropping the more polar the solvent you use, because it really likes to uh, adhere to the um, adsorbent, which is the alumina, the slower that it will move. I think that's gonna be enough, high enough in this column for today's experiment. What we need to do is to let this layer of solvent get just above the layer of our adsorbent, the alumina, and then I'm going to put more sand on top. I don't want to put it in there yet. I want most of that liquid to go down. We'll keep adding liquid as we need it, but I'm, it'll take a little bit of time for this to move down. But once it gets just a few millimeters above, I'll add some sand, a little bit more solvent. Again, anytime we add something, we need to pack it and then we'll be ready to add our sample. As you can tell, the layer of the liquid is just above the layer of the alumina. So I'm gonna add some sand to this. And then I also want to add some of our ethanol to kind of rinse down the sides. So what we need to do now is to let that solvent drain to right above the sand, and then I will add our uh, sample uh, of the dye stuff that I've already measured out in a test tube. I'm gonna leave that there. 